It's going to be all about um, Fusion 360 electronics. And we really wanted to tell you more about the routing capabilities, because even though routing may be the hardest process when it comes to uh, once the board is laid out, but is the most satisfactory. So we wanted to give you an idea, a better idea of what are the routing capabilities that we have. Um, and I wanted to encourage those that are participating here and let them you know about our insider program. I'll be sharing the links to the insider program. This gives you access to the latest revision two weeks before it actually gets released. And it has some other benefits. So I will share with you the link. That way you could get some more information to see if you would be interested in participating. Um, the panel today, even though we have um, some other guests that are participating, but they're not on our panel, but some very important guests that we have participating with us, but Jorge Garcia. Jorge, could you tell us just a little bit about you, please? Yeah, for those of you who have been using Eagle for a while, you've probably interacted with me on the forums at some point. I am a community manager for Fusion 360 Electronics and Eagle. I came in as part of the CADSOF acquisition, and I've been working with Ed and, and Richard for, for about 12 years now. So we've been working together for a good while. First as CADSOF, then under Premier Farnell, both Eagle, then under Autodesk Eagle. And now we continue with Eagle and Fusion 360 Electronics. Thank you, Jorge. I appreciate that. And with us today from Germany, we have Richard Hamrell. Richard, could you say hi and tell us just a little bit about yourself, please? Hi there. Thank you, Edwin. So, yes, I'm, yeah, I spent the whole life with Eagle. So I started <laughs> not as early as you did, Edwin, but nearly, I think, two years later than you, joined mm -hmm. CatSoft, did everything around Eagle, support and manuals and tutorials and all the stuff. Well, now we three... I think we are, yeah, the re remaining staff, nearly, nearly the remaining staff of, of, of the people coming from CatSoft with the acquisition. Now we are doing nearly the same job. I'm also a community manager. Try to, yeah, spread the word of electronics in Fusion now. And, well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I will keep it short. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. Uh, I'll let me, I'll let you know that Richard is a, is a, is a celebrity in in Europe. Every time I go to conferences with him, people line up to talk with him. So thank you, Richard, for that. Well, I'm Ed Robledo, um, been part of uh, CatSoft Computer for a very long time. Really happy to be part of Autodesk and the acquisition and this new exciting movement of Fusion 360 and becoming part of a platform that actually unifies electronics and mechanical in one environment. Really excited about that. And there's a lot of things that, you know, that we have to offer. So today, um, I wanted to primarily talk about the la the latest release that we had in July, which was the quality of life that we did address some really important parts. And I wanted to ask Richard, can you tell us a little bit, just a little bit about that release in July, our quality of life release? Yes, sure. Um, besides all the reading stuff we want to show you today, uh, as Edwin said, the recent release in July really concentrated on stability on performance and on productivity. So, um, you know, we, we, we looked in all the customer reports that came back with crashes and we tried to fix a lot of them and over 30 of them has, have been fixed. And we really see now with the July release that Fusion Electronics is, is much more stable as it was before. And of course, we also, it's an ever running yeah, demand to have better performance in Fusion. And that's something we also see improvements, especially when you open your documents now. We have uh, faster in-canvas actions like the calculation of the polygon, but also if you move something around, if you do undo, if you add components and all the other stuff, it's you, you can feel it. It's faster than it was before. And yeah, a third topic is about productivity. So we added some or we improved some features like the arrow key support, a long demanded uh, um, feature. I know it from from the very beginning of Eagle. I think it's version two point six. There was was the request: Can we move <laughs> components with, with the arrow keys? Because if if you have a small grid, then it's much easier to to place, of course. And well, and there are some other things. Uh, one thing I want to point out is about keyboard shortcuts. You know, Fusion can, of course, do commands 
and, and shortcuts. But now we have the ability, as you know it from Eagle, um, to assign commands or a sequence of a command or command sequences uh, to one function key. And that's really nice. So we are really uh, caught up here and have really cool improvements on productivity. It makes easy, uh, life much easier in Fusion. Yeah, what you call quality of life update that's something I would call customer delight release. But uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's it from my side. And <laughs> yeah, I hand, yeah. hand over to Edwin. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to be, we're going to be having these uh, quality of life or, or, um, uh, updates. Um, and, you know, our cadence is approximately every six to eight weeks, we come up with a new release. And um, we're going to be doing this quality of life updates, um, you know, once or twice throughout the year. So I just wanted to give you that. So today it's all about routing, you know. Um, routing is once you put all your components on the board, you have all these signals, all of you that are here, they're quite, you're quite versed with the process. It, it could be fun, sometimes it's not so much fun. So we wanted to show you a little bit about our interactive and some manual routing capabilities in which you could actually combine them as well our, our really intriguing and really interesting violator mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and allow Jorge to take over now. So I'm gonna stop sharing and allow Jorge to share. Thank you, Jorge. Okay, let me know if you guys can see my screen once I share. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Confirmation? Yes, yes yep. we can. Okay, excellent. So the way we wanna approach this webinar is basically go through the spectrum, right? We're gonna start with fully automatic all the way down to full manual and everything in between. But before we do that, the first thing we need to talk about is the design rules. Under rules DRC, you know that your routing is often constrained by the design rules. So here you specify your layer stack, different clearances, um, distances, etc. And all of this constrains the automatic tool. So they will not do anything that will violate these rules. In addition to the default design rules, you also have net classes, which can allow you to further constrain certain nets. We just want to mention this briefly before we go into the routing, because you need to be aware that this is the mechanism that basically guides the automatic tools and the semi-automatic tools. Um, we're not going to go into depth into the DRC. We could spend a whole hour talking about DRC, but just know that this is what's kind of the engine that's driving the rest of the routing mechanisms within Fusion 360 Electronics. So the first thing we're gonna talk about here on, on my left is the fully automatic. So if we go over here to design, we go to the route menu and you have, sorry, to the quick route menu, you'll see that you have an auto router underneath. For those of you familiar with Eagle, the setup is pretty much the same. You can specify the amount of effort, which will dictate how many different variations Depending on your computer, the maximum number of running threads will vary. So this is the number of threads that can run simultaneously. Usually it's two per core. So if you hit continue, you'll see in this case, I put, I believe a medium effort. So you get 10 different variations. If we expand, we'll see that they're all slightly different. So you can see that the preferred directions are changed. The routing grid is different. And then if you go into the details, sometimes the cost factors are adjusted as well. Okay, but the, the whole aim of this is to give you, in the end, uh, a selection of routes, of fully routed boards, hopefully. And then you pick the one that you choose best, that you deem best for your application. The top router variant is always going to take the longest because it uses a more sophisticated algorithm. In the case of the non-top router variants, those are just brute force. So basically it routes till it can't route anymore. Once it runs into that, it rips up a few as dictated by the settings, and then it tries again. In the case of the top router algorithm, it actually mathematically analyzes the board first, all the different connection points, and it passes a sketch onto the old or, or the, the original brute force algorithm and that guides its routing. So it's more mathematically intensive, but the end result tends to be aesthetically a little bit more natural, like what you would expect from a person, a little bit more natural. I don't wanna claim that it's human level, but it looks a little better. So this is fully automatic and it can be controversial depending on who you talk to. 
This is something that you generally only want to use on non-critical traces. Okay, you, if you have high-speed traces, if you have high-speed, you know, USB 3.0, or you have PCI, or if you have high power, that's not stuff you want to let the outer router do. The way Fusion Electronics is set up is that anything that you route manually before you run the outer router is preserved. So the outer router will not touch anything that's already routed. And that kind of gives you the idea of the optimal workflow. Route anything critical first manually, then go ahead and you can let the auto router finish off everything else if you are so inclined. So that's fully automatic. The next step are the quick route tools. So quick route tools are all in this menu and they're basically semi-automatic. So a couple of highlights here is quick route guided. So the way this one works is you can identify a group of signals that you want to route. So let's say these right here. You see these pads? Okay. And then let me move this over here. And then you can right click to start the sketch and you'll see that they're all kind of converging to a point. As I left click, I'll start drawing a path. And I'll just draw something really crazy just to kind of highlight how this works. Obviously you naturally wouldn't want to do something like this, but Okay, oops, let me back. Yeah, but this would be one. the type of situation. Let's say you have a group and you want to like avoid something, but you want to define the path, right, Jorge? Correct. And then at the end, when you hit enter, it will route following it as best as it can. Sometimes, in my case, I didn't deviate that much, but you see that it found the best way through. So you can see all of them routed simultaneously in a very natural way. Right. This is this is reasonable. This is something a person would do. You don't have it going off in weird directions or transitioning layers if it doesn't need to. Okay, another highlight here is just you can quick route single air wires. So you just left click the air wires and they get routed. And again, in a pretty natural way. If it ever does something that's maybe unexpected or you feel could be better, you also have the option to smooth. Okay, quick route smooth basically will try to minimize the number of segments in the trace if it can, if there's any way to simplify it. So you could click in this case, I'm pretty sure there won't be too many options, but let me just click a few, see if any change. So this one was able to become straight. So it went from three segments to two. Changes here. No, so that was the only one. So if you do a, if I do a control Z, you'll be able to see the difference. Okay. So if I go smooth. Okay. So if you ever get, you know, lots of bends or you see that the end result is is has more angles that you think it should have, more bends in it, you can always try smooth to clean it up. So there are other quick route modes such as multiple. You I just can try to, to comment really quick, Jorge, that I've seen some users actually use the outer router and then come back with the smooth router with the quick smooth. <laughs> some <laughs> some do that as well. You probably have to do a lot of smoothing though. You know, in all honesty. So there are other quick route modes, but that's the basic gist of it. Okay. So these are semi-automatic. It's not routing the whole board in one go. Here you have more control. Now, what if you want even more control? Now we're starting to move closer to the full manual end of the spectrum, and that's using the normal route command. Now, one thing we want to highlight here, and this is for those of you who are coming from Eagle, this is a key difference. Okay, if you're coming from Eagle, you're familiar with push and shove, walk around, and ignore. Okay, but in Fusion, those three types of commands have become environment variables or environment settings. So what that means is that push and shove isn't limited just to the routing engine. You can push and shove while moving, for example. So right now, if we look down here, you're going to see that I have push violators active. I can switch to walk around as well. But if I go ahead and just hit move, for example, and I start moving this capacitor, you'll notice that the capacitor can move the traces and create space for itself. Okay, and this is something that's unique to Fusion. 
most of the time, whenever you see walk around and push and shove, it's only the routing engine. But in the case of Fusion, this is something you can do with every command. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, as we're routing, I wanna go over a couple of the routing options because the route command has a lot of options. So I'm gonna go ahead and just manually route. Jorge, before you move on, somebody asked, can you rotate it while it's in the middle of the other traces? Yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. Let me go ahead and move it. Let's do it. All right, I'm not gonna lie to you. Now, sometimes it can run into that where it can't fit any more traces, but you can. And then if you go way past it, it'll come back. So yeah, you can rotate it. Thank you, Jorge. I appreciate that. I hope that takes care of your question, Larry. Thank you very much. And if there's any questions, guys, uh, Ed and Richard, feel free to interrupt me if there's anything that we can address while we're in the middle of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and show you the main route command. The other routing modes work similarly. So differential pairs and multiple work in the same way. Let's go ahead and just route. Okay, and we have our trace. Now, while the segment is unfilled, it's basically modifiable, right? As soon as I left click, I've established that part of the segment, and now we have this new work in progress segment. Okay, if at any point I decide I didn't like the direction I went, I can always backspace to undo those that I've you know fixed. If you want to transition layers, there's a few ways to do it. The fastest is using spacebar. So if you do a spacebar, you'll notice the via is now on the end of the trace. So you can choose where you want to transition. Additionally, the via can push and shove, so it'll create room for itself as well. And then once you're wherever you want to have it, you can left click and it'll transition to the other layer. And then as you fix segments, you'll see that it'll again, create room for itself. And again, at any point you can backspace. Okay, a couple of other things here. You notice that it switches direction pretty fluently. If I want it to kind of snap and ortho, stay kind of in one main direction, you can hold control. And you'll see that unless I really like break away, it maintains its, its direction. So that's also a new feature trying to make sure I cover as many as I can because there's a lot in the route command. Um, okay, let's say let's say I do this trace, but now I'm not happy with it and I'd like to redo it. Before you had to rip up, now we have loop removal. So you can just draw the trace again. And as soon as it interacts with the loop again, it'll clean up. Okay, so whenever you have loops, it'll automatically clean them up for you. If that behavior is not desirable because you're doing uh, signals in parallel, you can always turn it off, okay? And you can see here all the parameters that we can put in as we do the, the routing. So I do want to show you the route multiple. Let me go ahead and grab these three. So I'm going to switch to route multiple. And it works in a similar way as the guided uh, quick route. So I'll pick these three. Okay, I will go ahead and right click to begin routing and you'll see again, they can all push. Now the spacing between them is actually controllable. So you have your the, the M key for minimum spacing. Whoops, I closed something. Or I called the move command. So actually I did the wrong one. Happens to the best of us. Go ahead and do that again. So I know I can you can adjust the spacing as you go. So we can push and go into the command line. We can type in min spacing and you'll see it tightens up. Okay, you can increment spacing. You'll see it'll do it again. And again, you can do this a few times. Now, this is also tied to shortcuts. But right now, the shortcut has just slipped my mind, but you can see it's changing. And obviously, you can do decrease spacing. You can just keep putting it in. Okay, and then you just go. Now, one thing that's really interesting is once you get close enough, if you press the Enter key, then what'll happen is 
it will quick route to the end. So basically, once you're close enough, you can let the assisted routing tools or, or the quick route tools just finish it for you. So if I press enter, you'll see that it tries to finish it for me. Okay, and again, if I'm not happy with it, I can try to use the smooth command to clean it up a little bit. Click the wrong one. Okay, cleans it up a little bit. Now, a couple of things to note while we're working with quick route is you'll notice here in the menu, you can route, you have a few options. You can route on the active layer, any layer, or specific layers. Active layer always refers to the one in this combo box next to the grid spacing, okay? Obviously, any layer is do whatever you got to do to get it routed, and then specific layers, you can just select them here. By default, it's going to be on active layer. And again, you can control the width, via shapes, things like that. So at this point, Ed, is there anything else we want to cover before we start taking questions? Uh, um, no, I was actually going to tell you we have like five more minutes to go. Yeah. So I wanted to go ahead and um, you could stay there, Jorge, if you don't mind. And yep. we'll just use the Q&A or preferably the chat uh, to address any questions that anybody might have. Okay. Oh, last thing I forgot. If you want to go full manual, it's basically ignore. If you go ignore your full manual, you have no help of anything. You can, you know, short traces together. You can do whatever craziness you want to do. So if we're on full manual and I pick this, you'll see that the DRC is telling me, hey, you're, you're doing something crazy, but I'm allowed to do it. Okay. Any of the other modes will respect DRC and will avoid creating shorts like this. Excellent. Thank you, Jorge. Let me see if there's any, I don't see any questions right now. I did answer a few questions in regards of if there was the push and shove would move components mm -hmm. and no push and shove only will move traces, traces. and vias. Mm -hmm. It will not move components. So we have a question here about controlling pad entry angle in any auto mode. Um, so no acid traps. Yeah, that's exactly what it means. Yeah, no, you can't control the entry angle. So that part in the in the auto automatic modes, you probably have to fix it afterwards yourself. Like I know you're referring to these here, correct? You know, where they come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the uh, the assisted modes, the quick route modes, don't take that into account. So like on this end, it's okay, but on the other one, it'll just try to keep it as as short as a distance as possible. That's how it is right now. It doesn't. It doesn't control the entry angle at this point. Yes. Uh, excellent. Thank you, Jorge. Um, somebody asked about ODB++ and made a comment. Yes, Fusion 360 Electronic does support um, ODB++ output. You could do it uh, as a single entity, or you can make it part of the CAM processor, the ODB++. Okay. Okay. So... Um, I encourage those. I don't see any questions. Oh, I see the Q and A is active. One moment. Check it. Uh, in, in. How, it. Says how to tell the router not to come out the side of a pad. That's how to? The, yeah, that's, that's, question. that's the same. That's the similar question to to mm -hmm. the one we had beginning about controlling the entry angle. Okay. You can't. You can't control it right now. Actually, if you actually, if. Yeah, go so, ahead, Richard. To jump in, uh, actually, there are some parameters in, in the algorithm to control this, but um, you really, it's difficult. So there are some, you have preferred directions in the layers, and you have some parameters. I think it's something like CF for cost factor, malus, and bonus. Mm -hmm. And there you can play around with the, with the parameters. Um, the bonus is uh, you have to set you have to set the value low, and for malus you have to set the value a little bit higher, and then it controls a bit the direction. So this, this means uh, uh, it's probably using the preferred direction to come out of a pad or go into a pad, but it's really something. Um, it's not very reliable. The set of parameters of the other router there it's very complicated and. Everything depends on all the other things. And you could try to change there, but there's no real um, tool to say, okay, go just this direction. That's not possible. Yeah. And often I like to compare the, the auto router to a dog. You can guide it, 
but you have no guarantee that you can force it to do something. Mm. So auto router is kind of like that. You know, you can, by changing the cost factors, you can guide towards a preferred result, but you don't have any solid guarantees that it won't do something. I see just another related, auto router related question about, can you define different track widths for power and other signals? Yes, you can do. You have to define net classes and mm -hmm. the auto router takes care of them. Correct. That takes us back to that first point. DRC and net classes guide these tools. So the auto router will respect the net classes. Quick route will respect the net classes as well. And I just wanted to add, if anybody wants this file, this is just one of the sample files. So in Fusion, if you go to electronic samples, you'll see one dimensional palm and you can play with this file. That way you could follow the same examples that Jorge did. Well, um, I would love to keep this going. So please join us on the forum. I've added the link to the chat. Uh, 